This video provides instruction on how to safely don the High Consequence Infectious Disease Assessment PPE recommended for use when assessing patients with suspected HCID in the UK. The HCID Assessment PPE was developed by members of the HCID Network and the Health and Safety Executive and provides an evidence-based high level of protection against pathogens which transmit by airborne and contact routes. Remember that HCID assessment PPE donning and doffing are advanced procedural skills and it is important to undertake practical training and competency sign-off prior to use. To book an ultraviolet simulation training course, visit hcidtraining.co.uk. The HCID assessment PPE ensemble includes an FFP3 mask, a front opening hood, a full face visor, a reinforced surgical gown, a high grade apron, three pairs of gloves, Wellington boots, all are worn over a set of surgical scrubs. PPE donning should be supported by a buddy who checks the fit and integrity of the PPE. Before donning PPE, ensure you are hydrated, have been to the toilet if needed and feel well enough to enter the patient room. Remove ID badges, jewellery and tie long hair back. Wash hands and cover any cuts with a waterproof dressing. Put on Wellington boots, preferably a couple of sizes bigger than your normal shoe size. Do not recycle boots. Once used, boots should be treated as potentially contaminated and remain in bins until HCID results are known or be appropriately decontaminated between uses if this facility is available. Put on your FFP3 mask and check for fit. This must be the mask that you are fit tested to. If you have not been fit tested to the masks available and the patient is suspected to have a respiratory pathogen, you should not proceed with donning. Put on the hood, fastening the Velcro tabs if using a front opening hood. Check the fit around the face and jaw, ensuring a good overlap is achieved with the mask. Put on your first pair of gloves. These are standard length nitrile gloves. Put on the long reinforced gown. Securing the Velcro fastening at the back. Tie the gown at the side and ensure the gown cuffs fully overlap your bottom pair of gloves. Check for sufficient overlap between the top of the boot and the bottom of the gown, aiming for 10 to 15 centimetres. If required, trim the gown so it's not a trip hazard. If you are unable to find a gown that achieves a 10 centimetre overlap, you should not proceed with donning. Put on a pair of long cuffed gloves. These should fully overlap the cuff of the gown. Tape the gloves to the gown using four strips of microfor tape placed lengthways. Take the high grade long length plastic apron and break the head loop where it usually sits at the back of the neck. Put on the apron, tying at the top behind the neck and bottom around the waist. A high fit should be achieved with the apron high up over the chest area. Put on your visor and ensure the band of the visor overlaps with the hood with no skin showing. Check the visor shield overlaps with the sides of the hood and there is no skin exposed around the jawline. 
Put on your third pair of gloves. These are standard length nitrile gloves. Whilst it is not possible to wash hands or use alcohol gel in the red zone, this outer pair of gloves can be changed as needed if hands become contaminated. If a sterile procedure is planned, replace the nitrile gloves with sterile gloves pre-procedure. Thicker, marigold-style gloves may be donned instead of nitrile gloves for cleaning. The doffing buddy should run through each step and check all items are in place. If any gaps or defects in the PPE are noted, these should be addressed. If this is not possible, do not proceed into the red zone. Once fully checked, you are now ready to enter the red zone. This is the end of this video. For more videos, printable large format posters, online learning, or to book a HCID simulation training course, please visit hcidtraining.co.uk.